actually just in a small tangent on uh going shout well, like it, what what do you uh uh, from everything I know, she's an instrumental, a really crucial person to to the success of SpaceX yeah. in running the show. She's the president, the uh, COO. Uh, what uh, do you know about her that uh, uh, sort of the genius of Gwen Shotwell? Man, my understanding is she's really the glue. <laughs> you know, she's the glue to the tornado. <laughs> like, tornado comes in and then she comes around and just really executes on, on and, and, and helps you know, I, a famous story is that at some point Elon walked in uh, or she sprinted into a meeting because Elon was actively trying to cancel Falcon Heavy, mm -hmm. saying it's too far, like it's too much development, it's still too far away. And this is like, you know, this might have been like end of 2017 or something. And it flew for the first time in 2018. So we're we're talking like it's close to the end of development. You know, there's hardware being built, all this stuff. And Elon's literally in a meeting telling people they're going to cancel it. and We're going to move on to BFR or now Starship. Um, and just go full steam ahead on that. And she runs into the meeting and reminds Elon, we have X amount of customers mm -hmm. that have already purchased a ride on Falcon Heavy. We can't delay that. You know, so it's it's that business sense of like, we, yes, it's great to innovate, but we also have to pay our dues and 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 make the money to continue our operations. And I think she's just a lot better at, she has, I think she has such a great perspective on everything. It really seems like everything... She, she doesn't, I wish she did more interviews because I would love to hear more from her. Um, but man, like it just seems- Hear like, that, Gwen? <laughs> I for wish, both of us. Yeah, she hasn't actually done that many interviews, right? Yeah. Not really, no. She's done like a TED Talk, um, a couple of little things here and there, but not really many interviews. And and I would just love to hear like what, you know, what on a daily basis, like what is she doing that, to keep her head on and, and keep everything so organized? You know, it's, you know, my, yeah, I- my understanding is that she she is absolutely integral and and does just a, a insane amount of work at SpaceX. Yeah, I mean the so it's the the project planning, but also the how the teams integrate together and the and and the hiring and this is the management. I, I think the it's thing. a lot of it. Is the, honestly even just the business making sure the money's flowing in a positive trend, more or less. You know that yes, Elon's obviously a money guy, but he thinks he's so. I think Elon is so risky. You know, he just loves to throw it all in that he leaves little margin for error. You know, he's he's been really lucky with rolling his dice, you know, especially like when he started SpaceX and Tesla. That was the ultimate roll of the dice. But I think she's a healthy balance to be like, well, here's our, you know, operations and now we can continue to do this without risking everything, you know. And Starship's close. Let me be clear. Starship is close to risking everything already. It's just such a big, fast-moving, high-risk developmental program that like, I, I personally think, you know, SpaceX would probably be fine if they shut the doors on Starship and just flew Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy for the next 10 years. They would still be commercially valid. They could not spend another dollar on research and development. They could fire, I don't want them to, <laughs> fire everyone involved in anything research and development and just ran operations on Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy, and they would still be dominant for 10 years. And they would still have a business case, and they'd still be fine. But... um they're all in, like all chips are pretty much, as many chips as possible are in 